In order to calculate the performance of an aircraft, we need to solve the general equations of motion. Now, the general point mass equations of motion for two-dimensional symmetric flight consist of many variables. Unfortunately, it's not possible to solve a set of two equations with more than two unknowns. Now, in the last video we determined that it is possible to express the aerodynamic drag as a function of airspeed under the assumption that lift equals weight. Now, along similar lines, I would like to try to express the propulsive force as a function of airspeed in order to simplify these equations motion even further. Now, before we can do that, I have to refresh your memory a little bit about what you have learned in terms of propulsion. And I have to introduce a few new definitions. Now, let's start with the fundamental equation for thrust. Now, any air-breathing engine, as indicated here, regardless whether it is a propeller, a turbofan, a pure jet or a helicopter rotor, functions according to the same principle. A mass of air is accelerated to a higher velocity and as a result a force is created according to the momentum equation for steady flow derived from Newton's second law. Now therefore I can re represent all propulsion types with this simple schematic re representation. Now in st steady conditions the inflow velocity of air equals the flight speed of the aircraft and the velocity behind the aircraft equals what we call the jet velocity. Now the mass flow of air through the engine is indicated by the ter term m dot. Now in most propulsion systems used for aviation, fuel is burnt and thus the mass flow at the exit is the summation of the mass flow of air and the fuel mass flow. Now based on the momentum equation, we can state that the thrust equals the change in momentum rate which is the mass flow of air plus the mass flow of fuel multiplied with the jet velocity minus the mass flow of air multiplied with the flight speed. Now, strictly speaking, this result only holds if the pressure at the exit of the propulsion system equals the atmospheric pressure. However, the pressure term is in practice often much smaller than the momentum terms. Furthermore, the mass of the fuel is much smaller than the mass of air and can therefore be assumed zero. So we have one simple equation to express thrust. Now, in essence, there are two fundamental options to create the same amount of thrust. One can take a little bit of air, m dot in the equation, and accelerate it to a high jet velocity, and this is typically done by jet engines. Or one can take a large mass of air and only give it a small acceleration, which is typically done by propellers. So which of these options is better? Now for that we need to define efficiency. So let us start with the main objective of an aircraft, which is to fly from A to B, at a specific velocity V. Now to do so, thrust needs to be created by the engine in a time interval delta T. Now the aircraft will then have traveled delta x meters. Hence the energy needed to travel this distance can be determined from the principle of work, which states that the energy needed equals the distance multiplied with the force. Now the energy needed per second, which is power, then equals thrust times delta x divided by the time delta t. Now if we take the time interval small enough, it becomes thrust times velocity. Now this power we call power available. But in order to create thrust, we need to provide power, for example by burning fuel. And this power is called thermal power Q. And for an engine powered by fuel, this equals the mass flow of fuel multiplied with the energy that is contained in each kilogram of fuel a constant chemical value we call H. Now the total efficiency of the propulsion system can be defined as the ratio between power available, which is our end goal to fly from A to B, and the thermal power. So essentially the energy we put into the pro process is Q. Unfortunately this efficiency is always smaller than 100%. But why is this actually the case? Now, since the engine accelerates air, kinetic energy is left behind in the atmosphere, 
which will eventually, eventually dissipate into heat. Furthermore, the air leaving the engine has a higher temperature and thus heat is also left in the atmosphere. Now the increase in kinetic energy of the flow per second is what we call jet power. It is the kinetic energy rate behind the engine minus the kinetic energy rate in front of the engine. And if we look back at the total efficiency equation, we can also express it as power available divided by thermal power multiplied with jet power divided by jet power. Now this is a little trick in order to separate different energy losses and to get more insight into the physics behind the process. Now the total efficiency can then be written as propulsive efficiency multiplied with thermal efficiency. Now let's have a closer look at the propulsive efficiency. Propulsive efficiency, E to J, is defined as power available divided by jet power. Now, if we write out these terms, then power available, of course, is thrust times airspeed, and jet power is half m dot vj squared, which is the rate of kinetic energy behind the engine, minus a half m dot times the airspeed squared, so the speed of the aircraft. But of course we know that thrust can also be written as m dot times vj minus v, and then of course we still have to multiply it with the airspeed v. And what you see in the denominator is that we can take a half m dot to the left hand side and multiply it with vj squared minus v squared. Now we can take the term you see over here and rewrite it slightly. So if we keep what is on the numerator the same, which is still m dot times vj minus v multiplied with v, then we can divide it by a half m dot times, and now I separate some var variables, I can say this is vj minus a v multiplied with vj plus v. And that is interesting, because the term we have over here is identical to this term, so we can remove it both in the numerator and in the denominator. At the same time, we can take the m dot over here and the m dot over there and remove them. So that greatly simplifies our equation, because what we then get, if we take the half and put it on the top, we get 2v divided by vj plus v. And if I simplify this even a bit further, and I try to move this v to the numerator, or the denominator I should say, then we obtain the final result, which is 2 divided by 1 plus vj divided by v. And thus our efficiency we started off with is only a function of the jet velocity and the airspeed of the aircraft. So, the propulsive efficiency purely depends on the ratio of the jet velocity and the flight velocity. Now, if we would make a graph of this equation with propulsive efficiency on the y-axis and the ratio of airspeed and jet velocity on the x-axis, you can observe that as the ratio increases, propulsive efficiency decreases. In addition, I should mention that Vj is always larger than the airspeed of the vehicle when a propulsion system delivers a positive force. 
So propulsive efficiency is always smaller than 100%. Now this is quite easy to understand, because in order to create thrust, we need to accelerate air and leave kinetic energy in the atmosphere behind us, once the aircraft has passed. Now this equation gives me an opportunity to make an interesting observation through a small example calculation. And what I'm going to assume is that I have some kind of a propulsion system which delivers a thrust of 1000 Newton. So this is just a purely hip hypothetical situation. Then this propulsion system I'm assuming has a mass flow of air of 10 kilograms per second flowing through it. So based on our thrust equation, which is m dot times the velocity difference given to the air, we find that in order to create 1000 newtons of thrust, Vj minus V must be equal to 100 meters per second. So we have to accelerate the air by this amount. Now let's have a look at two separate situations. Situation A is an example aircraft which is flying at a velocity of 100 meters per second, which in aircraft terms is relatively small. Now this aircraft is delivering 1000 newton of thrust, and with this information we can calculate the propulsive efficiency. So we know the equation for propulsive efficiency, and this tells us that it's 2 divided by 1 plus Vj, and Vj in our case has to be 100 larger than the airspeed, so it's 200 meters per second divided by the airspeed, which is 100 meters per second. So this is in fact 2 divided by 3, and thus you can express that as saying this is an efficiency of 66 percent. Now let's take another situation B, where everything is the same, but now we have an aircraft which is flying at 200 meters per second, and it's still delivering 1000 newtons of thrust by accelerating the same amount of air. So from this we can derive that our jet velocity has to be 100 meters per second larger, so it should be 300 meters per second now. So if we once again calculate propulsive efficiency, then we find that that is 2 divided by 1 plus 300 divided by 200, and if you figure out what the propulsive efficiency is, then we find that is about 0 0.8, which is 80 percent. So we have completely different efficiencies, but realize that we are generating exactly the same thrust, and we're also having the same mass flow. So that's an interesting observation. Only by flying faster, the efficiency of the propulsive system changes by quite a large extent. Now based on this, we can conclude that engines with the high jet velocities have a low efficiency at low speed flight, but can perform quite efficient at high velocity. Now, amongst other reasons, such as the engine size and the weight per unit of thrust, this explains why jet engines are used at high speed flight and propellers for low speed applications.